you know, almost an ironic and interesting last film for her playing this sort of magical, mystical individual. And, you know, to many, she was that. What's up, everyone? Jim Alexander here with Real Talker, and today I am going to talk about and review the sci-fi mystery uh, adventure film Wonder Well. Wonder Well, yes, that's the name of it, and it stars the late great Carrie Fisher and Rita Ora and this girl behind me right there. Uh, so let's take a look at Wonder Well. Okay, so what is Wonder Well about? It is a lot of things going in here. Um, it's it's about a young girl. It's a coming of age story. It's set between modern, realistic world of of Italy and this fantasy world. So it's like going back and forth between this fantasy world and um, this mystery, enchanted fantasy world and modern day. Italy in in real. So um, it centers around a girl uh, and her sister, the main one, of course, the one behind me, right? There. You know, I'm talking, well, the one with the apple. Yes. Uh, and um, her name is Violet in the film. Uh, she's played by uh, Kiara Millward. Um, and uh, this is a first time performance for this actress. So uh, we'll get into the performances, but if you haven't heard of her, you haven't seen her, there's a reason because this is her first film. And um, sadly and ironically, the last one for, for the late great Carrie Fisher. Uh, but yes, it is a sci-fi, uh, enchanted, mystical, all the words magical sort of uh, film. But it's not for kids, technically. I would not recommend this for, for young kids, actually. Uh, probably teens, 13 and over, maybe 12, we can squeeze that in. Um, but it deals with a lot of themes, kind of more mature themes. So um, even though it seems like it would be by the concept and theme, uh, it's not necessarily that. But yes, uh, back to the story, this girl um, and her sister and, and their parents are in Italy, her older sister, who's I think 15 and she's 12. Um, and her older sister is played, uh, her name is Savannah, is played by um, Nell Tiger Free. And uh, she's a model. So the older sister is a model and goes to this Italian uh, kind of modeling agency of sorts, uh, this, this modeling guru um, played by Rita Ora, uh, who plays Yana in a film, who's this uh, lead uh, talent evaluator. And um, and yeah, and this girl while there sort of uh, comes across this enchanted forest and a well inside of it. And we're talking about Violet here, the younger one, while her older sister's often doing the modeling photo shoots and stuff. And uh, she goes into she meets also this uh, fairy who's played by Carrie Fisher. And uh, the fairy's name is Hazel. And Hazel sort of takes to her and shows her this this enchanted magical well that she goes into and um she kind of sees a different version of uh of life in a sense and uh in this mystical way so she gets um basically she's sort of the the chosen one for hazel to to partake and take in this uh power of this magical uh flower that's kind of a, a bracelet of sorts. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. You need to kind of watch it to, to see where it's navigating. And yes, I did get lost at many points of what's going on, uh, fantasy, reality. There's just sort of a lot of dynamic kind of playing uh, itself out. And sometimes it gets convoluted too much. I think too many storylines or, or things are trying to be crammed in and it sometimes doesn't come out that great. 
Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the story. And uh, this girl is seeing two different worlds. And through that, she's sort of discovering the reality, what's going on. Um, so plainly said, we're going to put it in layman's terms. Uh, Yana, L L Rita Ora's character, is sort of the evil witch in, in a way. And Hazel... Um, who is played by Carrie Fisher, is uh, the good fairy in a sense. And they are sisters. So Rita Ora and um, Carrie Fisher's character are both sisters. One's good, one's evil. And um, that's sort of, uh, and they're both in a way trying to, to, to fight over Violet, but because Violet is the one granted the opportunity to have this um, bracelet that has magical sort of powers and, and things to it. And Yana very much wants it. Her sister Hazel is possession of it, but will only give it into someone's who, who's uh, rightfully deserving of it in a right hand. So it's got a lot of themes of classical sort of fairy tales too. Um, now let's delve in a little bit deeper. What makes it sort of darker? I mentioned it. There's a lot of themes sort of of sexuality being talked about, not sex in general being mentioned, the word sex, uh, sort of the, the father, um, of Violet mentions sex, compares it to a plug, <laughs> you know, I'm a big plug. Um, uh, Yeah figure that out on your own. And uh, there's there's mention of boobs and sort of there's there's themes and things. There's infidelity sort of being questioned here by the parents of these girls. So it's more adult natured for sure. So the themes here are not suitable for young kids that would not understand what's going on here. So that's why I mentioned 12 at minimum, 13 and up. I think it's more suitable for so this is for a, a teenager sort of um, show instead of more so a kid uh, because it does touches on the elements. And it, it, I was curious why it did, but it actually added some sense of uh, grounding to this film, adding the sort of the, the adult themes and topics here. Uh, so I actually thought it was an interesting choice, but... Another thing about this movie, I felt the the real life, the Italy stuff um, was more interesting than the fairy tale stuff. I think this film could have actually been done without the fairy tale portion, even though a lot of it centers on the mystical magical. I thought the interesting elements were actually the relationship with the sisters, what's going on with their parents kind of having a fallout on the verge of a divorce, the father kind of... Uh, potentially showing cheating ways and constantly eyeing uh, Yana and flirting with her and, and the mother noticing it and calling him out on it. And just uh, these coming of age of these, these young girls, you know, the sister, the older sister, Savannah being 15, kind of being tossed into this modeling, modeling world and the exploitation, I think is noted too of, of these young girls in a modeling world and how they're kind of treated like objects and, um, there's even a disagreement between the parents seeing the picture she she gets uh, of her daughter modeling and they're too risque for a young girl and uh, and these young girls wanting to be kind of seen and and, you know, just having that boost of an ego and um, and of des being desired by these people in the modeling world uh, in the sense of, you know, but not also being too young and not understanding what it really means and is. So I thought there were some interesting themes here that actually were tackled. So an adult viewer can understand what's sort of being said and done here. So then when the themes of sort of the sexual stuff that pops up makes more sense because they're trying to kind of hint at another subject matter here and topic. So um, that was interesting, but I, I actually enjoyed the, the coming of age story more so the real life stuff, the themes, the messages here being sent um, that happens in the Italian portion and, and the current stuff than the magical. The magical stuff uh, kind of can get convoluted and confusing. Um, as far as the special effects, I thought they were solid. This is by no means a big budget or anything like that. This is an indie film. 
Um, and the special effects look actually pretty cool. The enchanted forests and all sort of the creatures. And uh, I've seen a lot bigger, bigger budget productions that looked a lot worse with the CGI and animation than uh, this one did. So I actually give them credit for the visuals were done fairly well and, and detailed and look cool. There's this uh, sort of a scary head. It looks like what's got like these tentacles. It's like this... Uh, giant head creature structure thing you don't know if it's it's a it's a villain or not we later find out sort of uh not as scary as it looks or, or is uh but that was i think well done to the the cgi of that so cgi was actually fairly solid especially if you consider the budget constraints they must have had here uh, so kudos to that on them. Um, as far as the acting goes, I was really impressed by uh, Kiara Millward. Uh, first time actress, I thought her facial expressions were really good and, and on par with what was going on. And uh, she's interesting to watch. And maybe it's that kind of thing that she's just new to it. And she's more free to to sort of be herself i just felt she was kind of a young girl that age and she played it well so i was really impressed by young kira uh here and um to mention also this film has been on on hold for years it's just releasing in 2023 but it's obviously featured carrie um fisher in there who passed away and uh it's been on hold for years here we're talking about so um these act these young actors are probably more grown up now than they are in this film uh but it still shows on imdb as kiara's uh for uh, only film to date and um as far as far as nell uh, tiger free uh she has done way more work as you might have seen her in um game of thrones and uh apple tv's the servant so she's done a lot more and she's obviously uh, matured over these years now she's in in her 20s um and she was a teenager in, in this this um film so uh overall i thought the acting was okay it, it wasn't um it wasn't bad uh, or anything like that i mean you obviously have carrie fisher which i thought it was a you know almost an ironic and interesting last film for her playing this sort of magical mystical individual and you know to many she was that uh and she'll remember be remembered that way so i thought it was a a really interesting kind of ironic role in a good way i thought it's if this is the last we've seen you know this potentially i think is the last movie that will be released from Carrie Fisher. I don't think there's anything else that's unreleased at this point. Uh, then I thought it was a really interesting goodbye um, to her and in and, and this role. So um, she's not uh, throughout the movie. She's in bits and portions, not cameo. She actually has a supporting role here, but she's not in every scene or anything like that. So uh, there's also a young man here who uh, plays the kind of the, the good guy here. Uh, he's, um, He's looking out for the girls. His name is, uh, uh, in real life, Sebastian Croft. Uh, Daniele is, is his name. Daniele, an Italian name right there. Uh, but he he's kind of pops in and out, has a little bit of a romance triangle with these girls. Go figure. But he's a helpful hand, I guess, uh, you know, in, in, in their adventures, too. So um, that's something to note. Otherwise, uh, the cast is, you know, for a small indie, I mean, you got some big names in Rita Ora and, and Carrie Fisher here, and um, even a young up and coming talent like Nell Tiger Free, you know. Um, so yeah, the acting, it was okay. You know, nothing spectacular, not horrible, not great. Obviously, it's not that sort of movie, but um, it was fine. You know, the visuals, uh, I said, were actually much better than expected uh in for this sort of film and and the budget constraints you got to think about that too so that was not an issue the storyline like i said it's convoluted point at times but it's not to the point where you just like i don't care about this i'm done no it keeps you it keeps you 
in in it okay so even if it feels sort of corny or there are moments of corniness no question you know because just the nature of what this theme is you know of, of sort of a movie like this it, it you're gonna have some corny parts and dialogue and all that so uh that does happen but it's interesting enough to keep you to the end so uh, i stayed to the end and um kind of an interesting ending too i don't want to spoil it but i was like hmm I mean, obviously, you're going to raise some questions about what's going on in the storyline, like the parents aren't necessarily checking in on these kids who are running roughshod over Italy. I mean, they are kind of focused on the, the modeling sister, but Violet's all over. She's going to different dimensions and, and multiverses, and uh, parents don't seem to be looking for her. I mean, there's one note of it, but... Uh, she's got free reign, this little girl, to go around. But these are nitpicky stuff. You kind of just wonder, uh, like, wow, maybe the parents should uh, look after him them a little bit more, especially if they're in a foreign country and all. So this film uh, was directed by um, Vlad Marsavin, and uh, it's based on a short, short film, a short story, in a sense. Actually, I should say by uh, William Brookfield called... The Drain Hole Dreaming, uh, Drain Hole Dreaming is the name of it. Uh, so this is the feature version of the short story. And um, I think it actually works as a, as a feature film. Like I said, there's good points about it. There's some not good points about it, but overall for what it is, it's fine. You know, it's, it's an, it's a okay watch, not a bad movie. I've seen a lot worse lately that were more hyped up to be. And um uh, you know, and it's got its specific audience, you know, obviously it's sort of designed for teens. Like I said, it seems on a surface um, that it would be for kids, but I wouldn't recommend it for kids. It's too dark in nature. It's more of a brother's grim, um, you know, sort of telling of the story, not a Disney-fied version uh, of a story. So it's a little bit darker in nature and more serious in that aspect, which I thought was actually a good thing um, because it was too childish or cartoony. Yes, demographic would have changed, but I think the story feels more authentic this way with the themes that are being placed here. So uh, there's that for uh, Wonder Well and uh, time for scores. Okay, so we're going to go with acting uh, out of 10. I'll give it a five, middle of the pack um not bad not good so five out of ten i think is fair uh entertainment like i said there's some messy parts and um you know things that sometimes just don't make sense and you just kind of get lost <laughs> figuratively and literally uh even though we're not in a enchanted dimension like uh this character violet is but i give it a a, a six uh a six out of ten a uh, plot and story some good points, some not. Sometimes it gets confusing once again, but it's somewhat ambitious. So uh, what they're trying to do here, especially make it more adult themed. So I gave it a five out of five out of 10. Now the impression that this movie leaves, uh, I thought it's interesting because they could have gone the safe route here and done what you expect from films of this type and just make it really kind of, childish and cartoony and just you know that but once again i sort of thought the themes and uh what this movie kind of accomplishes i i gave it a 6.5 out of 10 for impression and creativity i thought they were creative trying to do things uh in different dimensions and trying to bring in the real world and the location of italy which is sort of enchanted and and magical in its own way um and uh the there was creative attempt uh, with this film. So I think they deserve credit for that. So seven out of 10 on the creativity. So these are your scores, which comes out to an overall score. You guys love hearing that of a 60%. So this is a 60% out of a hundred movie. Like I said, solid, you know, not bad, not really good. Uh, just middle of the pack. It's watchable, you know, something definitely you can, you can, check out and uh, watch and you won't be mad that you wasted time. So uh, I think the, the, the creativity in a, of the film is interesting enough to give it a chance. And I think, of course, if you're a fan of Carrie Fisher, you want to see your final 
performance, you know, and I think it's a it's a nice homage with her character and sort of what she plays here. Like I said, very kind of interesting um, that she does this for her final film. And uh, so definitely fans of Carrie Fisher, definitely check it out because um, it's Carrie being in her, you know, kind version and kind of hopeful and magical. And that's kind of cool to see. And Rita Ora is sort of a badass here. And I thought she did actually an all right job all around too. And, and impressed with the young girl, who uh, Kiara here. Um, so all around, uh, give it a look. Let me know what you think about it too. But in the meantime, make sure to subscribe. Subscribe to Real Talker. It helps out when you subscribe. Um, helps this channel keep on going. And uh, if you like this review, give it a thumbs up. And also comment, like I mentioned, uh, I like interacting with commentary. So if you've seen it, plan to see it, fan of Carrie Fisher, curious about what you saw, leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to uh, interact with you uh, as I like to do. And also you can follow me on social media at the Jim Alexander. That's on uh, TikTok, Twitter and Instagram and also at the real talker, same social media platform. So uh, there's Wonderwell for you. Looks enchanted and magical and mystical. And here's the apple from uh, Violet. Uh, and there we go. That's all I got to say for now. So uh, till next time, till the next review, I'm Jim Alexander with Real Talker and I am out. Oh.